Hello. The question we're going to look at today is discuss the view that ethnic inequality is the most important factor affecting the educational attainment of children. So discuss the view. And it's got the word view, which tells me it's likely to be a debate. It's a for and against argument. The ethnic inequality. So I will see ethnicity is green. The ethnic inequality is the most important. So I'm going to do four against, four against. I always aim for six, as should you. This side is going to be the ethnic inequality is the most important. That it's the most important factor that will affect the attainment or achievement. That it's more important. This side is going to be the argument, no, other factors are more important. So it, uh, the ethnicity is not the most important, but instead it would be class or gender, Oops, not ethnicity. So you should always plan your 35 markers get 43 minutes so a good three minutes of that should be well planned if you struggle with timing just bullet point at the end you'll still get marks so this side is going to be yes ethnic inequality is the most important uh institutional racism that one's going to be a paragraph that absolutely ethnic inequality is the most important due to institutional racism going to do gilborn Black males are seen as a threat, disruptive, and are three times more likely to be excluded. I'm going to do Pilkington. I always put those two together. There's evidence of racially discriminatory practices in the allocation of pupils to sets. I always put those two together. Uh, they're in a paragraph together. Um, hmm. I'd normally do Gilborn and Ball, that cultural capital acts as a shield. But the problem with that, adding that in the knowledge, is well, that would suggest that class is an important shield and that goes against the view that ethnicity is the most important. So I'm going to do Gilborn. I'm going to do Pilkington. And I'm going to add in Shane from Subcultural. Um, again, just the argument that um, Asian, that's East Asian girls, um, experienced... Uh, racism, and that caused them to create anti-school subcultures. You could do Mirza there. Instead, it's up to you, so you can do Shane or Mirza. Those three are always aimed for three, as should you. It shows really good range. So, this shows that ethnic inequality is the most important factor affecting attainment. Shows that ethnic inequality is the most important factor affecting attainment. Racist practices limits the grades of learners. In bottom set, racist practices can limit the grades of learners in bottom set and can cause minority groups to disengage
as a result of internalization. It's absolutely because it's racism that's limiting the grades of those learners being placed into bottom set. And they're largely going to disengage from education as a result of internalization of failure. You could also note here the fact that they're also likely to be disadvantaged as they're being denied access to the curriculum due to exclusion rates. So it is ethnic inequality that's the most important factor. It's that that limits the grades of learners. They can disengage as a result of internalized failure and are denied access to the curriculum due to higher exclusion rates. Remember, Gilborn notes it's not through, it's through a, um, a perception, the relationship's broken down. And as a result, those learners are not being taught, which is very concerning. In the evaluation, however, we're going to note Merz's evaluation that black girls work hard to resist racism and racist setting and streaming. Well, black girls work hard to resist racism and racist setting and streaming and do well in spite of this, suggesting that gender is equally as important as ethnicity. You'll remember part of your targets at the moment are trying to link your evaluation back to the question a little bit, little bit to keep the, the focus of the question throughout. Well, she's suggesting that if black girls can work hard to resist racist setting and streaming and do well in spite of them, that suggests that gender is equally as important ethnicity. Furthermore, Gilborn and Ball note that cultural capital is an effective shield. That suggests class is more important. If you've got cultural capital, that suggests class is more important. Um, as you can do as well as students can achieve despite racism with cultural capital. Again, we're trying to link back to the question. I know I've given you two evaluation points there, but it gives you a bit of range. We're suggesting in the evaluation, it's not class, sorry, it's not ethnicity, but class or gender that need to be considered that can act as a shield or you can do well in spite of them if you are female. Okay, yes, ethnicity is more important. You can't experience racism if you are uh, white, but as I say in the evaluation, we're arguing that they are clearly important factors. So no, we're going to argue that class is more important. Here I'm going to do material deprivation um, because you know, if you can't concentrate because you haven't had breakfast, regardless of your ethnic origin, that's going to lead with huge issues learners. So I'm going to do class, but I'm going to say ethnic inequality is not the most important. It is class and material deprivation specifically. Smith and Noble, look at the impact of material deprivation. the impact of material deprivation. So poor diet, um, poor housing, and uh, yeah, poor diet, poor housing. We're going to do four scythe and furlong. That the most significant factor, they always go together, those two. Most significant factor deterring working class from university was the cost. That's when they were three thousand pounds a year. Um, hmm. 
going to do catchment area. So catchment area. So areas with more social deprivation tend to have a higher turnover of teachers, which tends to lead to poorer quality learning. Be very careful. Students that I taught last year will know this. Please do not say that schools in more socially deprived catchment areas just have poor quality learning. Um, poorer teachers don't just think to themselves, I'm not so great at teaching, let me go to the socially deprived areas. The issue with certain catchment areas is if there's more social deprivation or more poverty, there's now 30 children in a class, two thirds of which who haven't had breakfast, who have to concentrate on other things. And therefore, that itself and the pressure on those organisation and those teachers, that's what leads to a higher turnover of teachers. So you're getting three, four teachers in a year and therefore the learning is poor quality. It's because you've had four teachers, not because schools in socially deprived areas just <laughs> pick teachers that, or employ teachers that aren't as, aren't as highly impacting. But that's my little, my little note, just be careful not to offend, uh, particularly examiners that probably work in socially deprived areas. So Smith and Noble, Forsyth and Furlong and Catchment area. Um, I am going to add in Ray. Uh, I really have an affinity to Ray, but Professor Diane Ray um, herself comes from a really uh, socially deprived background, traditional working class. She's a professor at Cambridge and she found that 97% um, of the poorest families wanted their children to attend university, normally use her as evaluation for others. It's the system that's at fault. Oh, sad. Okay, got three sociologists. I've added, I like catchment area. It's really helpful. It's still knowledge, but I like three just to, so I'm trying to give my examiner um, a reason, <laughs> find a reason not to give me full marks is where I'm headed here. So this shows, again, come back to the question, read it every time, that ethnic inequality is not, the ethnic inequality is not the most important factor. Class or poverty is, this can lead to lower rates of concentration, higher rates of sickness, and therefore, so it can lead to lower rates of concentration in class, it can lead to higher rates of sickness, and therefore, students will miss valuable content. They'll miss huge chunks of learning. Missing one lesson means that you've missed something that was on the exam. And if you've got poor quality um, housing, which has led to much higher rates of sickness, then what's going to happen is you're going to miss things that will come up in the exam and underachieve. Evaluation. However, the best evaluation we can give is we know that statistically our Bangladeshi community experience the worst poverty of any ethnic group. So we know that our Bangladeshi community experience the worst poverty of any ethnic group, but they perform above national benchmarks and above white British. This suggests poverty cannot possibly be the only factor. It's the best evaluation. Some ethnic groups statistically experience the worst poverty and they are above the benchmarks. Material deprivation can't be the only thing. And that's not, again, I say this quite a lot, it's not to deny Marcus Rashford his contribution in forcing governments to pay the children to eat, but it can't be the only factor and not the only thing that should be considered. But thanks anyway. So that's paragraph two. We're gonna go back to paragraph three. Just checking it was still recording, otherwise that would be <laughs> tricky. Paragraph three, we're gonna do ethnocentric curriculum. 
And I just take this from in my mind sections of the grid or sections of the grid. So the ethnocentric curriculum suggests that and always read the question each time. But ethnic inequality is the most important factor. We're going to do chord. There is an ethnocentric curriculum. I'm going to do tickly et al. That black youth in particular resent the invisibility and being reduced to a study on slavery. So why quite a lot of it, why a lot of history can't use colonialism as British history. Um, that's the argument there, really. Okay, I've only got the two sociologists for ethnocentric curriculum. Um, I'm not doing too bad, I've got three there, three there in catchment area, but I've just got those two there. So, tried my best for three, it's not possible in this one. If you think of any, please feel free to add them in. Uh, but this shows that, eth that ethnic inequality is the most important factor. Affecting the, oh, let's slow down, <laughs> affecting the um, attainment of children. I haven't said the whole thing for a while. Affecting the attainment of children because the curriculum can alienate minorities. It can alienate minorities and be unfamiliar and therefore can put people of colour at a disadvantage. If you don't know divorce, beheaded and died, divorce, beheaded, it puts you at a disadvantage. Um, and it can be alienating. It can alienate minorities who disengage. And it can be unfamiliar and therefore can put people of colour at a disadvantage. And I give you the divorce, beheaded, died example, um, reducing women to a rhyme. But anyway, <laughs> so, however, um, for Lynch, material deprivation is more important than any cultural differences, as this can affect attendance and concentration. It's a bit tricky, that one, with the ethnocentric curriculum to evaluate. I suppose I could, to be fair, do MERSA and pop that there, maybe leave um, Gilborn and Ball there. Um, but it's quite tricky to evaluate against the ethnocentric curriculum with names. Could you gender um, or could just argue that material deprivation is the one that's going to mean they're less likely to be able to attend or concentrate? It's a slight little repetition there, but still named evaluation and keeping focus on the terms of the question. OK, we're going to go back again. So we've got yes, ethnicity, no, class. Yes, ethnicity, the curriculum. And then we're going to say, no, it is gender. So it's not ethnicity that has, is the most important factor, but gender affects the attainment of children. Uh, so we're going to do Mitos and Brown that teachers give boys 
more leeway. They expect lower standards of work and allow them to underachieve as a result. It doesn't always feel like that, but the more teachers uh, have higher standards of you, expect higher standards and push you, the better you will do. So if we give them more leeway or we expect lower standards, we're happy when they get four, then we ultimately allow them to underachieve. We've got Sewell. There's been a feminization of education. And it serves to um, give girls an advantage with role models. Oops, feminization of education serves to give girls an advantage, but boys can feel alienated as a result. My third, gonna do. Um, Epstein, so Professor Becky Epstein. She heads up the Educational Endowment Fund. Um, very good organization. Epstein found that working class boys often experience homophobic bullying and being negatively labeled if they are hardworking or engaged. Okay, at the end of that paragraph, again, I like three, it gives good range. This shows the ethnic inequality is not the most important factor affecting attainment. Because both peers and teachers can disadvantage boys regardless of ethnic origin. because both peers and teachers can disadvantage boys regardless of ethnic origin. It can make boys unwilling to engage through fear of bullying from peers. Yeesh. So it's not ethnicity, it's gender regardless of ethnic origin, because uh, peer groups, uh, groups, sorry, boys may be willing, unwilling to engage, particularly if they're likely to experience homophobic bullying when they do so. Sad state of affairs. So however, gender has the lowest attainment gap it has the lowest attainment gap, about 9.1%. Both class and ethnic inequality have much higher rates of inequality. Gender has the minimal impact. Appreciate you have to be intersectional and connect with the three, but it really does have the minimal impact. Um, therefore, this suggests that ethnic inequality is more important than gender. Try and bring back to the question. Okay. Back for the question, I'm going to do language and ethnicity. So, modud. South Asian groups often have a, uh, an issue with a lack of fluency, particularly when English isn't spoken at home. Mm -hmm. 
So Madud, lack of fluency. Laboff supports this point, arguing again that um, language and ethnic ethnicity has a greater impact. So I've only got the two there for language, um, particularly for South Asian groups. It has black youth. Mm, yeah, black youth have good linguistic skills. Mm. If encouraged. So this shows the ethnic inequality is the most important factor affecting attainment in education as some students may struggle to understand teachers, textbooks, and exam questions. So those of you will notice that I'm taking the usefulness that I've given you, but I'm adapting it to fit the question. That's fine. That's actually a good thing to do. If it's relevant, you see how I haven't put there at all. It can explain why some students may struggle to understand. I'm linking it that it is ethnicity that's the most important because because of someone's ethnic origin, they may struggle to understand teachers or textbooks or the exam questions when you get into the exam that you might get, I don't know, consensus and it wasn't on the specification and now you're all confused at the exam questions. It's a disadvantage if an exam board use questions that aren't on the spec and you know communicate in those elaborate language codes. It's, it's just a disadvantage. So, however, on that elaborate and restricted language codes, I'm going to use Bernstein, who notes that, however, for Bernstein, um, working class groups are also disadvantaged by language codes. And if the education system communicates in elaborate, this will disadvantage working class groups, suggesting it is not just minorities who are disadvantaged. Okay, so we've done language as ethnicity. Against, I'm going to do, no, it's not ethnicity. That is the most important factor, but it is cultural factors. I'm gonna do Bordia, cultural capital. Again, with your fra gras and your tiny portions um, and your five different silver forks corrected, con you know, connected to a particular course. Uh, so you've got Bordier and cultural capital. Uh, also one of my favorite concepts, uh, symbolic violence where working class culture is often devalued. Um, and habitus, the expectations of your social group. Which university? Which one are you going to? Why are you going to college? Where's that going to end up? The expectations of your social group can either be an advantage or can be a disadvantage. Uh, Gerwitz. It is both cultural capital and material deprivation. It's actually standing in between Bordier and uh, Smith and Noble. 
18. Look, look, you're both right. You're both right. Um, and you can also do Sugarman there. That uh, working class don't tend to defer gratification. They tend to be very present time orientated. I think about now. I would note that's often because they don't have the privilege to think about the future, but they are good terms um, and help us consider some kind of cultural elements, I suppose. So this shows that it is not ethnic inequality. This shows, sorry, ethnic inequality. This shows ethnic inequality is not the most important factor affecting attainment. Cultural factors can give an advantage and encourage learners to invest in their future selves. and therefore work harder in lessons. However, 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 however. <laughs> That's a tricky one. However, cultural factors what I might be better off doing there, actually. Apologies for the rejigging of your handwriting. I think it's also why well, it's a good idea to plan. I think Lynch is going to need to go there as the evaluation because he's arguing that material is always more important than cultural. So I'm going to move him there. And then it's a good job I gave two evaluations. Mm -hmm, that work material is more important than any cultural differences yes it works and then i'm gonna put move murder there yes there we go that girls work hard to resist racist setting and streaming so I might have to doubt that black girls work hard to resist racist setting and work hard to resist an ethnocentric curriculum. And do well in spite of it. There we go. Phew. Now I've got names evaluation in each one. And I just make sure it flows. Again, that's why it's a really good idea to plan them. Um, because you're normally quite limited on what you can do on the evaluation. Right, in a conclusion, I reach a judgment. In this sociolo sociologist opinion, um, is ethnic inequality the most important factor? Uh, so to conclude, mm, is it the most important factor? Yeah, I think it is. Ethnic inequality is the most important factor. It can lead to lower sets, limiting the grades of learners, higher rates of exclusion, And it can cause alienation from a curriculum um, that focuses on white achievements and ignores the horrors of Britain's colonial history.
and ignores the horrors of Britain's colonial history. However, we cannot ignore the impacts of material deprivation on all learners or the impact that higher expectations can have on achievement. And this is both teachers and government's responsibility. So I make my point, ethnic inequality is, is the most important. This is what it can lead to. And I'm summarizing all the things that it can cause. I personally, without saying personally, I think that there needs to be more discussion of Britain's colonial history. Uh, we can learn British history, but not learn a version of it that's all about achievement from white groups. However, we also can't ignore material deprivation and it's a government responsibility to spend our mon money on our children. And, you know, teachers do need to consider that their higher expectations, that, the you know, they drive up learners' achievement is what's important as well. So I make my judgment here. In an introduction, you outline. So we would say, some have argued that ethnic inequality is the most important. Due to, and I'd add in some key stats. I always really think it's a good idea to include any stats in an introduction. You know, 49% versus the average. Um, the most important due to the ethnic inequality stats, and this has been argued to be the result of institutional racism, curriculum issues, and language barriers. But that would be to view ethnicity in a vacuum and not consider the roles that material deprivation play on all or the role of teachers and expectations which have an impact upon anyone um yeah so introduction outlines i'd say always with the stats always try and include some stats in an intro those ones from education should ideally roll off quite easily and then, then I've got my paragraphs and then I make my judgment in my conclusion. Apologies about rejigging that evaluation for anyone handwriting. You know, it's probably a bit of a pain, but do what you can. Okay, any questions at all, just let me know and I will see you next lesson or next video.